This time we'll look at not new but slightly older standbound speakers from Bowers and Wilkins. The 685 made its debut in 2007 for about 600 bucks, so notice they were a bit cheaper than the 606 S2 offered today. Because of the whole controversy surrounding the new model, I was very curious about the evolution of the 600 series and what I would think about the 685 in comparison with the newer one, which I have also reviewed some time ago by the way. So there was nothing else left for me but to look for a nice pair on the auction sites and hope that they would survive the shipment and get to me in the same condition as indicated in the description. Indeed, the previous owner had to take great care of them, they arrived in their original packaging with all the papers and most importantly in an excellent condition. I'm aware that their appearance may not appeal to everyone, but it should be noted that the speakers still look very unique and neat. The combination of a beautiful aluminum tweeter and a yellow woofer with an interesting structure definitely meets my taste anyway. Later on BMW has abandoned the Kevlar used in this case in favor of their own material called Continuum. The shiny silver Continuum looks interesting too, but admittedly the contrasting Kevlar has something going for it. Probably the most controversial piece, which I am also not sure I like here, is the large size Twitter surround that's placed quite oddly towards the right edge. It is also worth noting that in contrast to the new models, there is no mesh to protect the Twitter. Without a doubt the uncovered aluminum diaphragm is an eye catcher, but on the other hand it is not surprising there is this large number of loudspeakers with pressed membranes on auction sites. The build quality and the fit are really good, the black veneer is smooth and pleasant to the touch, as I mentioned the drivers themselves look solid, interestingly the Kevlar fiber woofer seem to be covered with something because it does not fray like I've seen with similar materials, for example in my old Wardell Diamond 10.2s. The baseboard and speaker covers are also made of high quality materials, probably the weakest element here is the rubber cone tick on the front. I'm not so sure it matches very well and with time the rubber can peel in a similar way to the parts in the interior of some cars. You have to remember to clean this part gently. Fortunately, mines are flawless in this respect. Moving to the most important, the sound quality. Shortly after connecting those 685s to my NAD amplifier for an audition, I've started to feel emphasis in the treble, but at the same time this unique sense of clarity that seems to build much of that Powers and Wilkins signature sound. And if you look at the measurements I've done in my listening room, there seem to be some peak in the mid-range at around 1.5 to 2.5 kHz. Of course, with such in-room measurements you have to have some form of reference, so here is the comparison with my main speakers marked as a blue line on the graph. As you can notice the boost in mentioned frequencies is quite substantial, oddly enough it seems like all of today's controversy and discussion around Bowers and Wilkins sound usually comes down only to treble, while mids are getting overlooked. Don't get me wrong, higher frequencies are in fact noticeably boosted, just look at the range of 5kHz and above. But when it comes to speaker's overall characteristics, mainly that specific sense of vocal insight and clarity Bowers and Wilkins is often praised for, in my understanding this comes in large part as the result of this upper mid-range uplift. See, for example the new Wardell Diamond 12.2, which I recently tested, also had a boost in treble but the meats were clearly lacking there and so the coming sound was overall a bit too artificial and the vocals were kind of shallow. While other parts of meats may not be perfect, the key here is the upper mid range. If you're familiar with the BMW sound, chances are you probably know that specific, echoey, slightly nasal-like sound of vocals. But they are also sounding more clear, noticeably magnified and lively. Perhaps some would argue this speaker sounds too lively. 
The aluminum tweeter definitely brings out a lot of small details and nuances, I'm just not sure about the lower portion of the higher frequency, especially when you look at the measurements. That said, all of those little clicks, snares and such similar effects in the music are reproduced in a quite different, interestingly expressive, slightly metallic way. On the other hand, the area of high frequencies can in fact become a little too hot, like what you've seen on the graph, especially, or should I say mainly, with brighter recordings. Though I must say, I think the sound is overall a bit more in control and balanced out, contrary to the new 606. But please, don't quote me on that, since unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to compare the 685s and 606 side by side yet. I hope I will be able to do such video in the future. Despite mentioned, it's still not the most universal, or should I say neutral sound. Having said that, I don't see anything wrong with it. In tracks such as You're Always On Time by Tangerine Dream, or Pen's Wish from Under Siege 2 soundtrack, when I cranked up the volume, the scene was so pumped up with details and energy, which was truly amazing. In others, the vocals would put so much forward that I had a feeling I was pretty much at a concert. It is a fun experience, I think even more so for those of you looking for something different, or a second pair of speakers with indisputable ability to colorize the music with that more engaging, lively sound. The Twitter provides surgical, metallic and cold highs, while the Kevlar woofer delivers those softer but very determined sounding mids and lows. As an outcome, the whole vibe of the sound feels a bit magical and one of a kind. Accurate or not, mentioned cannot be said about many rivals, even today. When it comes to bass, it's possible that it's boosted in a certain frequency range. No, it's not overwhelming, but it goes low, it is precise, relatively clean and overall pleasant. To me this is where this speaker shines over the 606 again, which is frankly surprising considering the bass force is at the front here. The overall presentation feels a bit deeper, richer and just more enjoyable, or to put it in a different way, it feels like it has slightly but noticeably more weight. Something I recall was lacking in the newer model. Apart from that, the soundstage is quite wide and tall, and you get the feeling that the performer is really close to you. The 685s enlarges the whole image, especially vocals, and makes the track feel somewhat more alive. Though as I mentioned, there are two sides of the coin to this. To sum up, the Bowers and Wilkins 685s are certainly not speakers for everyone nor they are best all-around performance. The sound characteristics generally seem to be similar to that of the 606, meaning you get great clarity, vocal highlight and sparkly highs. While I would insist that the older model delivers more depth and be a bit more balanced out highs, direct comparison will be necessary to determine that. Because of mentioned advantages and uniqueness in sound, I gave the newer 606 four styles in my review. And let's not forget that the 606 were to buy for around 800 to 900 bucks, which is significantly more than what the 685 was originally sold for a decade ago. Even taking into account inflation, I believe this price increase was mainly the company's decision. The 685 just seemed to be much better value for money, it has similar if not all advantages of the 606, not to mention it was priced and still is much more reasonably for a budget speaker. So in the end, I decided to give them 4.5 out of 5 stars. In short words, you will get colorful sound, which in my opinion is worth the scene. Let me say, I was a skeptic of the BMW sound for a long time. But in the end, those speakers started to grow on me. They definitely have something going on for them. What do you think about the Bars and Wilkins 685? And would you like to see the comparison with the new 606 s too? Let me know in the comments. If you want to support my work, please consider subscribing. 1000 subscribers is really all what I need. See you in the next one. Peace.